Hello and welcome to Forever Rugby on Forever Sports and some interesting transfer news uh, this week with two Springboks set to make moves to Japan, which really works quite well actually. If you look at the best sort of some of the best performing Springboks, a lot of them playing rugby in Japan where first of all their workload gets managed very well, the seasons align quite nicely in terms of sort of starting in sort of uh, I think it's November, December, um, but then uh, finishing quite early, giving them opportunity to rest. They don't kind of play now during this time. So uh, players like, you know, Malcolm Marks, uh, Frank Moss, Pierre Stett, Toy, Ches and Colby, Damon Delendi, Quack and Smith, you know, these are some of the top performing players for the box. And uh, I think they've all really reaped the rewards of going to Japan where they're on very big contracts, earning good money, but not being played into gr the ground. You know, if you compare their game time to the likes of a Jasper Visa, for example, um, who plays uh, a lot of rugby. <clears throat> Over sort of twelve month period, even some of the the South African based players, even when there are is it, there is a bit more sort of uh, leniency with regards to to when they can or can't be uh, made available. Uh, it still seems to be like sort of Japan is kind of like the the holy grail of big money, staying fit uh, and playing in in a reasonable league. I don't think it's quite as physical, but in, in terms of prolonged careers, for example, uh, I think it's been a very very good. Uh, situation for a lot of spring market players. And the players we're talking about today are Andre Pollard and Kurt Lee Aronser. We'll start with Kurt Lee Aronser because this move was uh, confirmed about a month ago. Jake White confirmed that he will be taking a sabbatical in Japan. Obviously, the money is fantastic. And we've seen a lot of players do and take these sabbaticals. And I quite like the idea. You know, they're players who are of a sort of national interest. They go to play in like sort of six months sort of season for, for, for Japan. They earn a lot of money and they come back and uh, they then rejoin their unions. It's kind of like the, the kind of perfect situation with regards to losing a player for maybe a season, but getting them back long term. And we've seen the kind of arm do that. We've seen Maxima Pimpy do that, for example, at the Sharks. It's quite a normal thing. Now, Kurt Lawrence said it was confirmed that he was going to do that, but they have confirmed where he is going. And uh, that is that he has been signed for the Dana Bores which announced them today. Um, he will play in the fourth season of the Japan Rugby League 1. They finished ninth last term, um, but won twice more than in the previous season. So uh, they are also going to be featuring the likes of a Jasper Visa, who's obviously also made that uh, that move. Um, sorry, he's gonna be, the first game he played against, he'll be making, is against the, the side that uh, Jasper Visa signed for, which is the uh, Urasawa... Uh, D Rocks. So they first matched in December 22nd. So that kind of, sort of gives you an idea of when uh, the season starts. So speaking about the move, uh, Kurt Yarn said that the hard grounds in Japan and the general approach to the game with its fast pace and plenty of ball movement is going to suit me. He said several of my teammates with the Spring Marks have or are in Japan and they all said the same thing. It's a great experience playing there, but also living in the country as it's completely different from the path most South Africans players trade where they play at home in the United Kingdom and Ireland or in France. I'm really looking forward to the rugby, but also the cultural side of the experience and seeing how it goes. Hopefully I can make a difference for the Dino Boards, who I know are a well-regarded club in the league, did well last season, and are ambitious about climbing up the table. We know he's going to be good, don't we? I mean, if there's ever a perfect sort of signing for a Japanese side, Kurt Yarnson probably would be it. And the main thing is, I think from my understanding, he'll rejoin the Bulls and might even be available for you know, the running stages, you know, those playoff games towards the end of the season. So it's the perfect situation. Now, Andre Pollard. Now, this has not been confirmed, but uh, there is a, a report by rugby passes Neil Fizzler, who actually was the first one to break the Sia Khaleesi news, that uh, he is looking to move on from the Leicester Tigers, where he has made 53 appearances, with Japan being the sort of ideal situation. He has uh, got one year left on his contract with Leicester Tigers, from the understandings that it won't necessarily be now, it'll probably be next season, but uh, Japan seems to be the most logical place for him to go, especially going into his 30s, for example, again, talking about prolonging that period, earning good money, can go to Japan. He's previously played in there, played for the Red Hurricanes in Osaka, so he's played in the Japanese league before, and, uh, and once again, it becomes quite a nice option in terms of remaining and sort of prioritizing spring mock rugby and then sort of playing his club rugby for a Japanese side. Uh, a lot of teams, a lot, a, lot, a lot of fans sort of talking about the fact that maybe, you know, a move back to South Africa could be a really good one. Obviously, the Bulls would then be the logical destination where he sort of did make his debut and rise through the ranks. I don't think we're going to see that. I think financially, you know, it's a massive contract. Uh, and I think that, again, you know, in terms of us wanting him to be fresh to the box, 
as as a non Bulls fan, you probably want to play in Japan. Bulls players generally do play a lot of rugby. Jake White has not always rotated as much as maybe the other unions have, and and has been as uh, um, tolerant with, for example, the the stream of rotation. You know, you look at the likes of the Sharks players now play, will not play any rugby now in the URC until maybe one match towards the end, just as sort of refreshing before the end of your tour. Bulls players sort of generally don't get as much rest. I think that's just the reality. Whether that's because of the squad size, the, the, the approach Jake White wants to take, you know, either way. So, interesting to see where he does go. What do you think? Where should he go? Should he make the move to Japan? Should he come back to South Africa? Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Smash a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel as well. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Steve. I'll chat to you soon.